three, two, one. Hey, Rich. Looks like you're studying the Bible pretty intensely. Yeah, I, I'm looking for that lifetime warning, Anna, where, where it says that um, you know, if your church isn't working the way it's supposed to, that you can either get it fixed or return it so that you can get your, your time and your energy and your money back. <laughs> Do you think you're going to find a warranty in the Bible so that you can fix or return your church and get your money back? Well, I, I was hoping. Uh, you see, secretly, I feel like the life has gone out of our church. and uh, I just don't want to say that out loud because I don't want people to be discouraged. So we could just find that warranty right here in this Bible, then perhaps we can get a fresh start. Well, I don't really think there's a warranty in the Bible, but there's this story that I'm thinking of. It's in the book of Mark, chapter 5, 38 through 42. Do you know it? Probably. I, I mean, I haven't memorized all of this yet, so. But is that like a, a cure or something that would help us? To... Maybe. It's this story about a little girl, and she's lifeless. And everyone around her is crying uncontrollably because they think she's actually dead. Jesus comes in and he scolds them for thinking that she was dead and he says, no, she was just sleeping. When people begin to laugh at him, he just kicks them out. So, so you're thinking that, that my local church is like that little girl and, and those mourners, they're just like the people who've given up and thinks that she can't be saved? That, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm thinking if we just, could just get rid of those scoffers, we could have a new church. No, the story keeps going from there. Jesus takes in with him um, the girl's parents and a few of his disciples so that they can actually watch him wake her up. But what does he need the disciples for? I mean, he could do that all by himself. I think he wanted the people there to help witness to God's love in action. When there are people there to witness, they can then go tell the story to people who weren't there so that people can believe it even if they didn't see it. It's like when you get a group of committed disciples together and they witness together to God's love and action, this amazing thing happens and it's like we're getting woken back up ourselves. And then we can take that story out and make new relationships with new people and we have this strong desire to keep sharing God's love. Hmm. So I think I understand it a little bit better. Um, we're not just being awakened so that we can just keep living the way we've been living, that, that, that something's got to change. That, that does make a lot of sense, but yeah. to be honest, I don't think we can do this all by ourselves. Um, we've tried just about everything you can think of, and, and nothing seems to have made a difference. Yeah, I really get that. So it's not exactly a warranty, but there is this group of amazing people in the Oneana District who are committed disciples. They are the Oneana District leadership team, hmm. and they are willing and excited to come alongside your local church and help begin a conversation with you, including you and started by you, that helps to look at how your gifts and um, how you yourselves can become a new possibility for making disciples of Jesus Christ in your neighborhoods. It's like they're willing to come in alongside you and help you to bring the life back into your church. Well, I, I really think that would be appreciated. I'm really thinking that a, a fresh set of eyes would let us see new possibilities and you know, maybe there's things that have been there all along that we're just missing. We would like to extend the invitation to you so that your church can think about how it is that you can become better at making disciples for Jesus Christ. Will you pray about this invitation?